Hello, my curious peeps. This is Ket, aka Kakibot, and three years ago I made a video that was all about the cost of life here in Edinburgh. And the other day I found this article, which is basically about how Edinburgh is now the top one most expensive place to live in if you rent alone. You probably know that um, in the past months, years, but especially months, the prices of multiple things went up. We are currently going through the cost of living crisis and the inflation is also through the roof. So I thought this would be a great time to update that video from three years ago with some new prices. So yeah, that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go see how much more groceries cost in the supermarket and we're gonna talk about what it's like to rent, what it's like to buy, obviously how much the energy bill went up Ugh. and other little things uh, that might have gone up in the past three years since you watched that last video. If this is the first video about cost of life in Edinburgh that you're watching from me, you should not have to go back and re-watch the old one, but um, if you're super curious, do it. I'm gonna link it in the doobly-doo. Okay, so rent. If you remember our old house that was a two-bedroomer in Abbey Hill that was 950 per month, uh, nowadays that sort of flat would probably cost you about 1200 but it can go anywhere from 900 to 1500 It really depends how lucky you are. If you need somewhere larger to live, maybe you have a family, uh, then for reference this is a three-bedroomer in the colonies which is a very pretty place to live with a family and it is 1500 pounds per month. Now both Abbey Hill and Dalry are kind of like almost like extended center. I would say that's the best area to look for flats in in Edinburgh because you're like walkable distance from the city center and everything pretty and usually there's like a high street with stores and cafes. I would say that the best area to look for if you want good value is these areas of like extended city center which is places in Edinburgh from which you can comfortably walk to the city center and enjoy all of the shops and attractions but also you kind of have like your local area local high street with shops and and cafes and you know it's not the suburbs it's kind of comfortable if you want to still enjoy the city but you're not paying for that vanity postcode um, that is kind of a good rule of thumb the lower the number in the first half of your postcode is the higher your council tax and rent is likely to be but not always because I do see a lot of flats that are in the old town that are quite affordable I think this is because a lot of the houses there are in quite a bad state. Speaking of council tax, in our old house that was the two bedroomer, the council tax was about 140 quid per month. Now this is something that you don't have to pay if you're a student. Yay, student life. The council tax actually haven't gone up as much as the rent prices have. Uh, I believe that year over year, 21 to 22, the council taxes went up about 3%. It's not the same in all areas of Scotland, but kind of on average, it's 3%. Now, I found some data. So in the first quarter of 2022, the average rent price for one bedroomer in Edinburgh was 800, uh, 1200 for two bedrooms and 1600 for three. With this data, I can tell that our uh, colony house is actually cheaper than it should be. And now I'm worried that they're gonna make our rent go higher. Hopefully that's not gonna happen. Usually they can only do that once a year and you can always dispute it if you feel like it. But um, you can also lose the dispute, so don't go too crazy. And if you have your life all figured out and you're looking into buying a house, then unfortunately the prouse, prouses, mm, uh, coal, coal prouse, then unfortunately the prices of housing in Edinburgh went up 12% year over year, I believe. Or is it actually just last, like the last quarter of 2021 to the first quarter of 2022, which would be even scarier. And obviously like a nicer two bedroomer in Edinburgh will cost you about 250,000. So if you pop another 12% on that, that's no spare change. Now here comes the real doozy, the energy bill. And I know wherever you are in the world, you probably have to deal with higher energy bills right now. It's 
it's getting to all of us. But in this video, we're going to be talking about how much higher the bill is here in Edinburgh. Well, TLDR, 50% higher. Okay, so three years ago when we made our original video, our bills were about 110 pounds per month. And uh, that means that now it would be about 165 pounds per month. And the bummer, the real bummer, is that that's not even the last time it went up. It's supposed to go up again this autumn. So yeah, I think that that's a part of the problem. That's part of why people are a bit panicky, because they know that they do not only have to adjust to this 50% higher bill, it might go up another up to 50% again later this year. It is not, however, all doom and gloom, because some things are either the same price or slightly cheaper. The super fast fiber broadband we used to have with Virgin is still the same price it was three years ago. And obviously, if they ever try to make your bill higher, you can always give them a little cheeky call and tell them that you're leaving and you're going somewhere else and they might manifest some better price for you. Uh, also, I noticed that my GiveGaff mobile service is actually cheaper now. Three years ago, I was paying 15 pounds for 15 gigabytes of data and unlimited texts and calls, and now it's only 10 pounds. Also, one extra note, the government is actually sending some money uh, in the way of people who are struggling with this new higher bills. It is not super much money, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, essentially, they are sending some right now. That's the funds for people who are truly struggling. And uh, down the line in autumn, all of us are going to get, I think, 350 pounds, which um, I'm not sure if it's gonna change much, but you know, again, better than nothing. I'll take it. I'll take your 350 pounds, government. So now for the fun part, we're going shopping to Sainsbury's. Again, just like in the last video when we went to Sainsbury's, similar one, not the same one, but also not in the city center, kind of like just outside of city center, because usually when you go to like one of the smaller Sainsbury's, grammar uh, they do sort of hike up the prices a bit because it's essentially like a tiny convenience store anyway i think this is going to be interesting because from what i've heard some types of groceries went up by 20 percent in price which sounds crazy but on the other hand i have to say that this was like the first year in my life when i went to the shops and i thought to myself wait like i remember i remember this being much cheaper and in the past you know inflation would be a lot more sneaky and the prices would just go kind of up up and up and up like a tiny bit at a time and it would be it would feel more natural now it doesn't feel natural this is unnatural and we're going to be investigative youtubers and we're going to go in and we're going to go and see exactly the same shopping list that we did in the last video and we're going to compare how the prices went and then we're going to check in with you and let you know what we found out
and I am back uh, from my investigative shopping and I do have a list I did find most of the things that I did choose last time and uh, the verdict is that the things that went up the most are cheddar and ham and Heinz tomato soup. Also, I found a couple of cases of shrinkflation because that is the other way that you might notice uh, prices technically going up by the sizes going down. The products that are apparently the most guilty of this are like sort of like house hygiene products. I also noticed it with cat food. You might notice that your uh, like washing detergent tablets might have gone from like 40 washes to 38 washes. Hey, they sneak up on you, these tablets. Obviously, Sainsbury's is kind of like, I would say it's it's not like the middle of the road when it comes to prices in supermarkets. I think it's kind of like just above. Uh, but in this little retail park, we also have Lidl and we also have m &S. So those would be kind of the low point and the high point of your supermarket pricing respectively and i have gone through both of them and i'm gonna now let you see how the prices compare in these two extremes of the scale <music> We have already touched upon the energy bills in the house but now let's talk about the energies that make this beast move forward so petrol and diesel uh, those used to be about two years ago i think or three years ago when we made that previous video they used to be about 130 a liter and now they are both at almost 190 a liter what i am worried about that this is yet another one of those things that are going to trickle down into prices of other things. Now, thankfully, if you are not a driver, the Lothian buses are still pretty much the same price as they were three years ago. I think that the single ticket used to be 170, now it is 180. The day ticket used to be, I think, four pounds, now it's 450, so that went up a bit more. We also now have trams and generally tram tickets are the same price as bus tickets the only main difference is that when you're taking the tram to the airport uh, they are slightly more expensive i think that the return when you take the airlink from lothian buses the return ticket is 750 but if you take the tram it's nine pounds that is an open return so you can basically use the second part of your journey anytime and then there's also cabs obviously you know sometimes especially in the city with its weather if you're going on a date you might want to arrive looking you know pristine and for that a cab is great but uh, cab prices did go up my kind of personal feeling is that they went up probably about like 30 percent over the three years um again like the petrol prices are basically that 30 percent like that explains it completely so i don't blame them ubers they went up a lot i was trying to take an uber from haymarket to canon mills yes and it asked me for about 30 pounds which is insane if you need a car to hire i recommend you try bolt they are pretty new so they're kind of like subsidized by their relative newness on the market so bolt will take you places cheaper a lot cheaper than uber but uh, that's probably not gonna last long so if you're watching this now in the summer uh 
yeah, take advantage of Bolt before uh, they take that away from us as well. And now as an Edinburgh local, after you've paid your rent and petrol and groceries, you might want to actually go out and have some fun. Maybe you will want to get some coffee or a sandwich. Um, so in the video three years ago, I did say that the coffees in like, you know, third wave coffee shops tend to be between two and three pounds. I would say these days it's more 250 to 350 depending on the, the length of the drink. And also if you're in the city center, I would say adjust that price for more of a three to four pounds. But maybe you are not after coffee, maybe you are after something harder. Unfortunately, the bad news is Edinburgh is Scotland's most expensive place to get a pint on average. But that means that if you know where to go, you will obviously still get it for much less than the average price, uh, which is apparently 450. Um, <laughs> I think this is because in Edinburgh, uh, the tourist prices are just bumping it up. But if you're going into your local pub, it's going to be less than 450. Although I've heard that even good old weather spoons is now 20p more expensive per pint so there you go cost of living crisis <laughs> When it comes to food, um, for lunch I would probably expect it to be about 15 pounds, for dinner about 20 to 25, obviously depending where you go and that doesn't include drinks. Uh, drinks will always make the budget needed go up and up and up. My own personal feeling from uh, like the pricing of eating out these days is that obviously uh, restaurants did have to go through quite a lot during the lockdowns, um, not only, you know, they have they have had two years of not really making much money but nowadays they have to deal with like groceries grocery prices going up so overall compared to three years ago i think that the prices went up by about two to three pounds per meal which um does feel reasonable considering everything that's going on but yeah keep that in mind that's the sort of jump we have made in the past couple of years. If you live or visit Edinburgh, obviously you have the great advantage of having many, many museums that are free to visit. That's not only the National Museum, but also like the Museum of Childhood, the Museum of Edinburgh on uh, Royal Mile. But then you also have these like bigger attractions like Edinburgh Castle or uh, the Palace of Holyrood House. Edinburgh Castle tickets for adults actually went down in price. Uh, three years ago, they were 150 more expensive than they are now. I think Right now it's 18 pounds and they used to be 19.50. So yeah, good on me for going there only this year and not any of the previous years that I lived here. Um, on the other hand, uh, the Palace of Holyrood House, that one went up quite considerably. Five years ago, it cost only about 14 pounds and now I believe it's like 18.50 or 19 pounds. So that's quite a jump. You can really tell that the royal family is uh, trying to make up that money they spent on the, the Jubilee party. <laughs> if you want to see a movie and Netflix or Amazon Prime is not enough for you, um, the range that you're gonna pay for a ticket is quite wide. It starts on about five, 550 per ticket on a Friday night, which is quite quite a small amount of monies. Uh, that's good. That's usually at like the views cinemas. <laughs> then in some of the fancier cinemas, you might be paying um, up to like 11 pounds for a 2D uh, showing. If you don't go to the cinema alone, which I'm guessing most people don't do, I recommend you get the Meerkat movies deal because then on Tuesdays and Wednesdays you do get two for one in both the cheap cinemas and the more expensive cinemas. So depending on which one is close to you, this deal covers pretty much all of them at this point. And this is not a super fun thing, but let me just remind you that in Scotland, healthcare is still free. And also, unlike in England, all of the medication you get through the NHS is also free. You don't have to pay anything. The only thing that you have to pay for is usually your dentist. And that tends to be like, you know, like 13 pounds for, you know, scale and polish and then between 18 and like 28 pounds for an amalgam filling depending on the size so that, that's pretty all right but also as i mentioned in my video about mental health uh, these days it might actually be pretty sound to consider going private um, i can't really tell you how much private healthcare is that obviously there's a wide range and it depends on if you have any pre-existing conditions but uh, in general uh getting into any sort of NHS treatment right now is pretty hard because um, they have a massive backlog. So yeah, you might have to uh, 
make this a part of your budgeting if you're moving to Edinburgh. And before we wrap this up, I think that it's only fair to also talk a little bit about the other side of that scale, which is the income here in Scotland. The minimum wage right now is actually 950, which interestingly to me is the same as the living wage. And historically, the living wage has always been a bit more than the actual minimum wage. Uh, the minimum wage has gone up by, I think, 60p per hour for people who are 22 plus. And that is basically the biggest jump it had done in the past like 10 years. So once again, uh, not everything is doomy and gloomy. Some stuff is actually going the right direction. Um, if you're interested in knowing uh, a tiny bit about how much tax you're going to be paying in Scotland if you move here, um, unfortunately in Scotland you will be paying more tax than if you stay down in England. If your income is about 50k a year, then on average you're going to be paying about 1500 pounds more on your income tax, which is only a part of what you're giving to the state anyway. Uh, the other part will be the national insurance and I think that right now they have introduced a new bit which is kind of like a prepayment for your pension, which is not like too much but um, yeah there is a progressive tax in Scotland which means that you get about 12,500 uh, monies allowance out of which you don't have to pay any tax and then from there you get onto uh, the 20% income tax and then anything that's over a certain amount that's allowed in the 20% uh, the extra will be taxed by 40%. So that is how that works. That's definitely very simplified. You can try the income tax calculator that's listed on the Money Saving Expert site. I'm gonna link it into doobly-doo. I use it every month because my income kind of changes um, every month for month as a self-employed beep. Um, yeah, I find that very helpful. So check it out. Okay, I think that that really takes us to the end of this video. I hope this was helpful. I wasn't like 100% sure if I wanted to make this video but then people kept asking and I think that three years is a pretty good time like I think that things and prices and income all of those things really changed in the last three years and um, hopefully it has been helpful for all of you who are either planning to come here or have just come here or are daydreaming about coming here to know what the actual prices are at this moment right now because you know 2023 might be your year to move to Edinburgh. By the way, we are working on a video about how to move to Scotland, uh, which, you know, um, hopefully is gonna be helpful. I don't know, it's it, it's a hard thing to do these days, especially since Brexit happened. It's not super easy to move to Scotland, but I'm gonna do my best to at least give you some info on uh, where to start and what are your options. Okay, let me know in the comment section if Edinburgh is much more expensive than you thought, if it's more expensive than when you currently live or if you have any tips on how to make it less expensive don't forget that we also in the past made a video about money saving tips this one it's going to be linked in the doobly-doo as well if you go watch it right now then uh, that's going to make the youtube algorithm uh, see that you like my content and you want to stay on youtube thanks to me and that's good that is good for me and my channel so if you go watch that video now, you're gonna be supporting me. Another way of supporting me is visiting my Etsy store, link in the doobly-doo. Also, you can, if you're visiting Edinburgh this summer, you can visit the Scottish Design Exchange store where I'm selling my wares and all of the money that you're gonna spend there on my stuff is gonna go right back to me. It's a very fair, <laughs> It's a very fair system. I'm not sure if Simon is laughing or, or if he's coughing because he's got COVID now. He managed to not get it when I had it and now he has it and bummer. So we're stuck at home making this video. Okay, um, yeah, visit me on Instagram on kakibot and kakiblog and that is truly it for now. I'm gonna stop bothering you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave now and leave you alone for the next week or so. I adore all of you. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.